Hi. Hey, guys. I'm Megan. I'm Kara. This is the Witches, Magic, Murder, and Mystery Podcast. And this is your Tuesday side piece. Yeah. So we got a short episode for you today. Um, it's Megan's turn. I try to remind people when I post like the descriptions, like the Tuesday episodes, in case this is the first time you've ever right. listened. Or a little shorter. They're shorter. A lot of the times they're the stories that are sent in by you guys. Mm-hmm. Or they're stories that are interesting, just not really long. So this one that I have for you today, Mm -hmm. I really love it. It's a witch episode. Okay. And I love the witch episodes because we always get to talk Mm -hmm. about really cool women. Yes. This one's a little different because she wasn't actually a witch, Mm -hmm. but you're still all going to love her. Okay. (laughs) She's great. Okay. Okay. All right. Now I've already been through this thing where she was Italian. Oh, the names, guys. It's Veronica. I'm guessing it's Franco. (laughs) I'm going to call her Veronica as often as I can. So, Veronica Franco was a well-known courtesan in Venice during the Renaissance. She was known for her notable clientele, feminist advocacy, literary contributions, and philanthropy. Okay. Yeah. In the Renaissance. In the Renaissance. She's a woman. Yep. Doing all these things. Doing all these things. So, I had mentioned this story to a friend of mine who didn't know what I meant by courtesan. Uh Uh-huh. So just in case anyone else has questions, a courtesan was basically a sex worker, Uh but her clients were like royalty and nobility. If there's a hierarchy of sex workers, courtesans are at the top. Yeah. 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 And she was at the top of those even. So they were different from traditional prostitutes because courtesans attracted. Am I saying that right? Courtesans. 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 You know, it's. it's, You know, it's. Just. Never question it. it. (laughs) Okay. Does it work? So anyway, courtesans attracted clients not only with her body, but also her mind. Okay. Successful courtesans. <laughs> but Let's I say it both ways. Every time. Uh, please do. They were expected to be educated and charming. <gasps> okay. Just to give you some context of the time, from 1496 to 1546, which is like 50 years before yeah. she was born, the population in Venice was about 100,000 people, and of that... 12,000 were prostitutes. Okay. A law was passed in 1542 that stated any unmarried woman who had sex with anyone or accepted gifts from a man. That's it. You're having sex with anybody or well, accepted gifts me. from a man. Me. <laughs> what? I was just surprised. Like, wow, that's something. Wow. You're a prostitute. Uh, well, I didn't finish. But if you did those two, either. It's or. Either or. Mm, um, you're considered a prostitute. A, literally just accepted a cake from a friend the other day, mm-hmm. so I guess. Yeah. So if you're not married and you have sex, oh, well, no. okay. or if you're not married and you accept a gift from a man, you're a prostitute. And that meant you would face extra restrictions. For example, they weren't allowed to go to church on feast day, which mm-hmm. is a public religious holiday. So you have to Venice. be married to attend feast day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or you could be single, but not having sex with anyone. Not, not mingling, but you're... Yeah. No, okay. Okay. And you weren't allowed to wear silk, and you weren't allowed to wear gold jewelry. Because, oh, then we're out. We're out. Those were the rules for the prostitutes. Okay. However, courtesans were different. Could do whatever they wanted. They weren't wives or daughters who needed to be protected by their male relatives. They had more independence than other women. So by the time okay. Veronica Franco was born in 1546, the role of the courtesan went beyond sex work. These women were intellectuals. Uh-huh. Okay, so Veronica was born in 1546, uh-huh. and her mother was also oh, a courtesan. Okay, so she taught her the ways. Yes, so she grew up in that world. She knew how it worked. I should point out, in that place and time, sex work was just a career. Right. Yeah. There were certain social and legal repercussions for courtesans, of course. Like, they would never be, like, proper women. Of course. And there'd also be, like, the societal disapproval. Uh But they paid taxes. It was a job. Yeah. The people of Venice basically saw courtesans and prostitutes as something that had to be tolerated in order to protect honest women from Uh attack. I have so many thoughts about that. (laughs) And then the sex industry generated tremendous tax revenue for the government. Okay. But, like... Apparently, it's like, well, men can't control themselves, so they can go have sex with these women mm-hmm. without dishonoring any other women. Ooh. And it keeps the honorable women safe, you see. It's okay. It's okay, Kara. No, listen. No, listen. You're not no, listening. No, it's good. It's good. You're it's not good. paying attention. What I'm talking about are the sex workers. And we don't care. Yeah, right? no, no, no. They're it's... not honorable. Right. 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 
We we can just defla- yeah. deflower. That's them. all it is. Just, yeah, that's nothing. I mean, no, it's their job. It's oh, just, it's okay. just really interesting. Okay, it's just really interesting. Okay. But that was a that that was a way of thinking. Yeah, is sex workers so are make, okay make because a, it keeps the men from attacking it, the good women. That was a way of thinking, <laughs> or is still a well, way of thinking. I don't think anyone thinking. says. Thank God sex workers are here so that the honorable women won't get No, you know what I mean? Like, no, that's not but a... men still think that, well, any woman, some men, not some all men, men right. some, yeah, there's yeah. some good ones out oh, there. Yeah. We, yeah. we know some good ones, but there are some men out there that will just take advantage of and say, it is what it is. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so bucks. Veronica had three brothers. Oh, okay. And her brothers had a private tutor because they were men, mm-hmm. so they got to be educated. Mm-hmm. This tutor also worked with Veronica. Mm-hmm. As she grew older, she was unusually educated for a woman at the time. Good for her. And this did not go unnoticed by the male aristocrats of Venice. Oh. She did get married. It was a short-lived marriage to a doctor in the early 1560s, mm-hmm. but that ended. And that's when she became a courtesan in oh. order to support herself and her children. Okay. She would eventually give birth to six children. Three of them died in infancy. Oh. infancy. So Veronica was known as an honest courtesan, mm-hmm. which meant she was revered as much for her mind as for her body. Oh. I mean, it's really no wonder that men were attracted to her. Like, exactly. Yeah. You know, she was she was able to live however yeah. she wanted to live. Yeah. And it was excused because she was a sex worker. Yeah. Which is just fascinating. Right. Because if you think about it, if you had just taken the restraints mm-hmm. off of all women, all the women, no one would have to like identify themselves lower class and right. Yeah, <sighs> they're just powerful women, and it's okay. You could have married a woman exactly. that you actually mm-hmm. were attracted to her mm-hmm. mind and her body. Yeah. Why did we have to do this thing? <laughs> Let's split these ladies up here and uh, Let's make put, them box feel them up as make much them as we can. feel superior. It's not even making them feel superior. It's taking, like, any woman and being like, these natural urges you have, yeah. you should be ashamed of them. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or you're going to be dishonored, which is like... So we're going to put you in this worst. class so we can make it okay for us to yeah. deal with those urges of yours. Yes. Yeah. At 1565, at about 20 years old, Veronica was listed as one of the foremost courtesans of Venice in the catalog of all the principal and most honored courtesans of Venice. Oh, my goodness. Which gave the names, addresses, and fees oh, of Venice's most prominent sex workers. It's like a phone book. Yes. She was also a poet. Oh. During the 1570s, wealthy men would pay her to write sonnets. And she published a collection of her poetry in 1575. Okay. And that book also included poems by the man who had financed the publication. Oh, wow. Being a published poet elevated her status Mm -hmm. even further. And she ended up writing two volumes of poetry, that one in 1575 and then another in 1580. Okay. Another famous client of Mm -hmm. hers was King Henry III of France. When he visited Venice on his way to his coronation Mm -hmm. in 1574, Venice hired Veronica to entertain. Oh. So she was hired by the city of Venice. Yeah. They spent 10 days together. And she later wrote poems about it. Oh, my gosh. Aside from her writing and her work as a courtesan, Veronica was also passionate about... So, wait, she was the first Taylor Swift. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Veronica was also passionate about supporting other women. She tirelessly campaigned for a shelter for fallen women, retired Uh sex workers, where they could live, receive an education, (gasps) and get assistance in learning a state-approved trade. Oh, my gosh. The articles I read weren't consistent in terms of whether she was ever successful in this campaign, but I suspect she wasn't. Yeah. It just said she tirelessly campaigned for it. She She had a lot of connections in government and power, Mm -hmm. and she was like, I'll run it. I'll be the administrator. I've got this. And said, just never forget that. Women in that time had a lot of restrictions about what they were able to do, how could they behave, and how they could dress. Courtesans often denied these rules. They got away with things that proper women couldn't. They could own property. They moved about freely. They were allowed to be educated, and they could openly debate with men as long as they did so eloquently. (laughs) Don't you argue with a man if you're not smart enough. If you ain't smart enough. Oh, my gosh. Still, as sex workers, they didn't have the protection that proper women had either. Right. As Veronica wrote, 
to become the prey of so many Mm -hmm. at the risk of being despoiled, robbed, killed, deprived in a single day of all that one has acquired from so many over such a long time, exposed to many other dangers of receiving injuries and dreadful contagious diseases. What greater misery? Oh my goodness. Veronica hired a tutor, Rodolfo Vanatelli, to work with her sons, and she wound up accusing him of stealing jewelry from her. Oh. She took her accusation to the Venetian government, and following this, an anonymous accusation was, lo- was lodged against her oh, in 1580, saying that she practiced witchcraft. Are you kidding me? And even though it was an anonymous accusation, now mm-hmm. we know it was Vanatelli who submitted yeah. that accusation. Oh. So back then, when a woman was accused of witchcraft in Venice, she had to stand before the Venetian Holy Inquisition, a tribunal created by the Venetian government and the Catholic Church, and she had to defend herself. And they're like, oh, wait, we just hired her to do this, but now we got to... Oh, my God. If she lost, Mm -hmm. she would be executed. Oh, my gosh. So Vanatelli said that Veronica practiced witchcraft and made pacts with the devil to cause men to fall in love with her. Okay. He also said... I thought this was... so, So... Another complaint he had. A complaint, okay. She enjoys too much support in this city and is favored by many who should hate her. I put insert eye roll here. I'm sorry. You are one out of how many? I just... Everybody adores her? Yeah. People like her too much. You can't You can't be doing none of that. She's getting too big for her britches. We got we to gotta knock her down a couple. I don't... It's just like, oh, you're God. mad at her because she's likable. Like, yeah, and you stole jewelry and you've gotten caught. As we've discussed a few times in this podcast, when a woman was accused of being a witch back then, there were usually a lot of ridiculous, humiliating tests that were done in order to determine if she was a witch. During the witch trials, as many as 60,000 accused witches lost their lives. Oh, my gosh. This accusation against Veronica Franco came during the height of Uh Europe's witch hunt. Her trial lasted two days in which Franco denied everything, and eventually she was acquitted. Okay. Thank God. Okay. So, although she kept her life and her freedom thanks to that acquittal, the accusation of witchcraft scarred oh, her no. reputation. It caused irreparable damage. So all that work she was to trying her social to do was just yeah, yeah, just ruined oh. it. People just didn't want to associate with her anymore. She didn't have that like yeah. all the connections she had. Dang. I mean, they do say that they they are pretty sure she got acquitted because of all the connections mm-hmm. she had. But then it was like. Now, this is your reputation. We can't associate with Yeah, we can't do that. We can't keep doing this. So, Veronica was forced to flee Venice due to an outbreak of the plague. And while she was gone, her home was looted and she lost almost all of her wealth and possessions. This put her at the mercy of her clients and she relied on wealthy benefactors to support herself and her children. Mm -hmm. Her last major benefactor died in 1582. Okay. And so that... Yeah. Is it. Yeah. So Veronica Franco lived out the last of her years in poverty in a Venetian neighborhood known for its destitute sex workers. She died in 1591 at the age of 45. Oh, wow. She was at the height. Yeah. At the the top of of the pyramid. Yeah. And then someone accused her of witchcraft. And even though she was found innocent. Lost everything. Yeah. As always, I love talking about women who lived boldly and authentically. Yeah. Having no idea that their names would be remembered mm-hmm. hundreds of years after she died. Right. I mean, the 1500s. Yeah. She probably it's 20, never would have imagined mm-hmm. that here we would be talking about her still. Yeah. Just for no reason other than. She was an incredible She woman. was living her life. Working hard to bring justice to mm-hmm. other women who didn't have a voice. Yeah. And just being like, I'm going to do these things even though I'm a woman. Yeah. I'm going to write poetry. Oh, yeah. I'm going to dress the way I want to. Mm-hmm. I'm going to own some property. I'm yeah. going to make my money. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm going to have my children tutored. I'm going to. In the 1500s, particularly, yeah. like what a stand today. Yeah. So hmm. that's my story. That's an interesting story. I thought so too. Okay. I just really liked learning. Yeah. Her. I'd never heard of her. No, so. I hadn't either. So that's it. That's it, guys. That's your little side piece. Yeah. I hope you all are having a lovely, lovely day. And we will be back in a few days with another with a full episode. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can find all the ways to do that in the show notes. Yep. We love you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye.